Hello and welcome to today's Tech Talk on Intellion, the next generation in precision mineral nutrition. First of all, I would like to talk to you about the different important trace mineral challenges when supplementing trace minerals in your feed. So, first of all, um, you'll see top of the list is optimizing the trace mineral supplementation. This essentially means that we have to effectively fulfill the animal's requirement for trace mineral in the diet, um, which helps then to uh, fulfill the uh, many important functions that trace minerals have within the animal's metabolism. Secondly, uh, we notice that many trace mineral sources uh, cause huge reactivity in feed, which has an impact on, on key things like feed quality, feed intake, and bioavailability. Uh, we need to keep this in mind. We also need to maximize the accuracy of trace mineral addition. So trace minerals are required in only a small trace amount by the animals, uh, requiring very accurate weighing equipment, um, uh, which essentially, if you get this wrong, you can easily uh, uh, not supply the amount of trace mineral the animal needs. So therefore, uh, uh, combating this effect, we want to try and improve convenience and improve peace of mind for our customers. Uh, so if we manage to, to optimize all these three important factors, uh, this is where you will achieve optimal performance and return with your animals. So just going to go through these three topics uh, in sequence now in this first section. Uh, so first of all, looking at the trace mineral requirement or supp supplementing the animal's nutritional requirements within the diet. So we need to think about trace minerals as having an optimum balance. This optimum balance means that the animal is in a, a state of positive homeostasis, which is where the animal has good performance. Uh, you can see these two lines at the bottom here. Um, now, these represent the probability that the animals are either in this optimum balance phase, suboptimal so supply, or in subclinical toxicity. So what we can see is this line here is a lot more broad and shows a lot more variation in the probability whether the animal is, has got optimal supply or, or is in either of these two uh, um, toxicity or suboptimal supply areas. Now, this represents if you're feeding a lower bioavailability uh, source, and if you haven't optimized these three factors, uh, it's more likely that some of those animals uh, may be falling into these two categories. However, if you feed a highly bioavailable source of trace mineral, which is not having an impact on any of these factors, we reduce the probability that the animals are outside of this optimum balance of trace minerals. Secondly, um, as I said, it's important to uh, um, uh, maximize the accuracy of the absorption uh, and the weighing. So we can see within these two different, uh, uh, two different zinc sources here, zinc sulfate and zinc oxide, when you take into account the total molecular weight, uh, so of zinc sulfate, for example, zinc oxide, um, only a cert certain percentage of that is actually zinc, which is what we want. We don't want the sulfate, we don't want the oxide, we just want the zinc. When you look at that in depth, um, the published numbers for absorption coefficients are still the only very small. So of a total of 36.36 milligrams of zinc, total, um, only around 7.27 milligrams, for example, with sulfates, um, and 7.8 compared to 78 milligrams are absorbed in the, in the uh, case of oxides. So it's very important to make sure that your source is optimized for bioavailability and absorption, uh, and also you have a lot of uh, very high accuracy in weighing of your trace mineral sources in your diet. So as I said, trace mineral source can have a negative impact on feed quality. Uh, so an example I'm going to use here is vitamin stability. Uh, so this is just some data we've taken from the literature, um, looking at vitamin A, vitamin E, 
vitamin K and thiamine. Uh, you can see the different colored lines here represent the different sources of trace mineral. So for example, chelated and oxide minerals, um, you see over the, um, over the months, as the months increase, uh, the vitamin retention remains fairly static. Vitamin A and vitamin E. Vitamin K is notoriously unstable anyway, and so is thiamine. Uh, but we see comparatively to the other sources, we see much better stability maintained over time. When we compare this to sulfates or even the free metals, uh, we see, in fact, that there is a significantly larger amount of uh, 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 degradation or reduced amount of uh, retention of vitamins over those six months period. Now, if we take into account uh, uh, one of our hydroxy sources of trace mineral in Telebond's copper, you can see we, we've done a similar trial with this. Um, and we see that when we compared a, a negative control, uh, a copper sulfate versus the Telebond C, we see that over the storage time, the vitamin E remains fairly uh, static in the control which contains no trace mineral source. The copper sulfate, we see about 70% degradation within that 41 days. Whereas the picture is very different with the hydroxy trace mineral. We have 36% more uh, uh, retention after 10 days with the hydroxy, or three times the amount of, of retention after 41 days. We then analyzed the, uh, uh, analyze the uh, uh, plasma and we see actually that this effect is, is, uh, is repeated within the, the plasma analysis that we did. So we see the copper sulfate um, uh, actually found is much less than the intellibond, uh, about 11% less and that effect is significant. Okay so accuracy. Um, so as we said, the animals only require a trace amount of mineral to fulfill those nutritional requirements. Uh, it is, in practical conditions, notoriously hard to add the small inclusions needed uh, to fulfill the animal's requirement. So just to put that in perspective, the average Ross 308 broiler eats around 15 milligrams of zinc in the first week of its life. That is this much. And it takes 42 days. Before a broiler consumes 0.5 grams of zinc, which is only, in fact, the same weight as a staple. So you've got, you're, you're seeing now that the amount of trace mineral required is very small. So the uh, weighing and the distribution within feed is extremely important. So our solution. As we know, there are different trace mineral sources in the market that are commercially used and supplemented. So the, the standard market ones are the oxides, the sulfates. Um, so these are the inorganic sources of trace mineral, uh, which were used, especially uh, when it was found that the genetic potential was increasing and it was found that the trace mineral uh, levels in basal diets were not enough to fulfill the animal's requirement. Then uh, later on, uh, the organic trace minerals, the OTM innovation came along which helps it improve bioavailability, uh, reduce reactivity and improve homogeneity. But this came at a high price. Uh, then later on, the hydroxy trace mineral was invented in the mid nineties, which again uh, helped to improve the essential nutrient stability and also helped to optimize animal production uh, because of the slightly lower price point as well. Um, meaning that we can completely replace these oxides and sulfates. So the most advanced and newest technologies in trace mineral nutrition are the oxides and the hydroxy. So just going to go through these in sequence. Uh, so the hydroxy technology, uh, the intellibonds are highly potent. So we have a high percentage concentration of trace mineral. And they have a very individual structure which is a crystalline structure containing stretched covalent bonds. Also, we have an important uh, uh, small particle technology, uh, which means that we have, we, we have an essentially dust-free product. Um, 
Uh, and essential, uh, and what's important about this structure is that it's pH uh, dependent. So the structure starts to break down and solubilize once it hits the low pH of the stomach, and then absorption and release can happen in the small intestine and beyond. So uh, optimin, uh, what you can see the diagram of the structure here in the center, uh, the zinc in the middle, and the protein, short chain protein around the outside. Uh, in the production process for this product, um, we have, a, we have uh, a soy proteins, which are broken down by enzymes into short chain polypeptides. Different metals have different affinities for different uh, amino acids or peptides. So we allow these uh, natural uh, uh, affinities to, to make the bonds between the trace mineral and the ligand as strong as they can be. And we allow these specific bonds to form. So we essentially have 22 different amino acids competing for binding with the trace element, which means that uh, as a result, the structure is very strong um, uh, and the, the strength of the bond is very high. So thirdly, um, the optimin selenium is slightly different in that it is a selenized yeast. So what we're doing with this is we are allowing the a yeast strain, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, to in fact do the work for us and form the organic trace mineral for us. We, we grow this uh, yeast in a fermentation vessel and then uh, it produces for us selenoamino amino acids such as selenomethionine and selenocysteine. Okay, so Hydroxy plus organic uh, advantage. Just want to run you through some of the validation work that we've done. So to start with, we wanted to understand, is there an advantage of putting together Intellibond and Optimin, uh, the products we've just discussed, uh, to the performance uh, within the, the animals? We tried a number of different treatments here to test out this hypothesis. So the results are as follows. Uh, just to explain this, this graph here, we can see the end weight on the left um, signified by the bars and the weight gain signified by the line here. We have a negative control, an inorganic, uh, and, and full intellibond, a full optimin, and then we have different combinations of intellibond and optimin together. And what we found was that this 70-10, 70 intellibond, 10 optimin combination, uh, uh, zinc uh, was consistently the best in terms of both weight gain and end weight. Then we wanted to know is this uh, uh, effect consistent? So we carried out four different trials globally and created a meta analysis out of it. The treatments are quite simple, so we put a negative control, positive control, and then T1 is Intellibond only and T2 being the intellibond optimin 7010 combination. What we saw again was quite interesting. So overall body weight, uh, FCR, uh, and average daily gain gave us better uh, performance uh, with the 7010 compared to all the other treatments, and uh, certainly significantly better than the no negative control, and in some cases the positive control, and also uh, uh, the Intellibond Optimin combination uh, and the Intellibond only gave us a significantly better breast meat yield as well than the negative control. So the answer is 7010 is still uh, consistently working uh, in all four of those trials that we analysed. So this led us to think, OK, uh, can we uh, develop a, a new generation of trace mineral technology to put these uh, technologies together? and gain these benefits and pass them on to our customers. Uh, so this is where we introduce to you IntelliOpt, uh, which helps farmers and integrators uh, to optimize their mineral strategy. Uh, it guarantees that the animal's requirements will be effectively fulfilled and also optimizing the animal's well-being, preserving the environment, because the, both of these trace mineral sources help to reduce excretion of trace minerals into the environment. Why is this working? So trace minerals uh, uh, 
different sources of trace minerals, the optimin and the intellibond, both have a slightly different release profile. So the intellibond will solubilize in the stomach here, um, and then release and absorption of the trace minerals will mostly happen in the early GI tract or the early small intestine. Whereas with the optimins, we have uh, a release consistently and absorption throughout the whole intestinal tract. So we think that these two modes of action, which are well established, are happening uh, effectively and complementarily. We introduce to you the Intelliopt, uh, 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 the Intelliopt concept, which is the next generation in precision mineral nutrition, uh, providing synergy between these different uh, trace mineral sources, uh, precision, efficacy, convenience, sustainability and proven research, giving you the benefits of performance and profitability. Thank you.